Hello everyone, welcome to BI Consulting Pro. This is the last episode of our series Design Effective Reports in Power BI. In today's video, you will learn about enhanced Power BI report designs for the user interface. We all know that user interface is all about how reports are consumed and that includes the appearance and behavior of them. This is the final stage of development. So far in this series, you have learned about the data and visual selection. So now you can apply format and style to produce a visually appealing widely used report. So enough all the talking, let's get to see the agenda for this video. In today's video, you are going to learn about use report design aids. That means what are the different aids available in Power BI to design your report. Then you will learn about design visually appealing report. That means what are the changes that you can make in your report to enhance the user interface. Then you would also learn about reformatting reports for mobile consumption because in Power BI you have to design the different layout for mobile devices as well as for your desktop experience. Then you will also learn about design reports for the accessibility and lastly we are going to discuss about publish and manage reports. So all these topics you are going to learn in this video but before proceeding further let's see the answers of the questions that I asked you in the last module. These are the answers for the module 5 or episode 5. You can pause your screen and please match your answers with these. If you need any explanation or you have any doubt please post your comment in the comment section. The very first topic of today's video is design report showing details. That means what you can do to show more details. Well, the report design tools include formatting commands, selection pane, report layout options, page view, undo and redo. The very first comes the format command. So whenever you log in into your Power BI desktop application, on the top ribbon you will see these options and out of these many, there is one which is format. That means whenever you are going to place any image or any visualization onto your Power BI design canvas, then you can bring it forward, backward. You can even align it horizontal, vertically or in the center. Then also you have grouping if you would like to make it the group. Not only that, if you would like to edit the interaction between the different visualizations which I have shown you in the filtering experience module where I have shown you how to edit the interaction between the different visualizations or the slicers so that one also you can use it over here. Next we are going to talk about the selection pane. Whenever you create your bookmarks into the Power BI reports then this selection pane is going to be very helpful. Here you would find two different categories that means one is for layer order that means if you want to place one layer or another one options you have to use a format pane where you can send an image or visualization forward or backward but better than that there is a layer order so the topmost layer for example here the buttons they are always going to be the topmost layer if something is coming at the bottom of this it's going to be behind this one so that's how we can manage the layer but there is a tab order as well Tab order simply means once you press the tab key onto your keyboard so the way you would like to select any of the visualization or you would like to check any of the visualization into Power BI Canvas over there you can use this button. Like over here you will see the buttons, buttons, slices, QA so this would be the order that means whenever you are going to press the tab key onto your keyboard the order of executing that sequence would be your tab order. That's all you need to know about the selection pane. Before going further, there is one more thing. In the layers order, under the selection, you can hide or unhide any visualization. Basically, we do this under the bookmarks when we have to hide certain visualizations or whenever we have to show certain visualization into the bookmark. Next, we are going to discuss about the report layout options. So, as you can see on the snapshot on your screen, we have grid lines if you would like to align your visualizations in a certain order then you can use the grid lines then there is a snap to grid line and then we have last option that is log to objects as well. Over here you should remember occasionally the snap to grid feature will try to align visuals in an unintended way. While moving or resizing a visual you can temporarily override the snap to grid behavior by pressing the windows key. We all know that different browsers, different systems, different screens or mobiles. Every device has a different aspect ratio. So we should be aware about how we are gonna view the page or the report over there. 
In most of the cases, I use the custom size canvas and in that case, I always want my report to fit to the page. It should not appear with, you know, a lot of scroll up and down or right and left. So that's why I always choose the option to fit to the page or you can go to the fit to the width. So it totally depends on your own requirements, what you want to do. But I'll suggest you either go to the fit to the width or fit to the page. That's going to enhance your user interface. Whenever possible, use the largest available monitor size and then maximize the Power BI desktop window. To maximize the report canvas, consider closing or minimizing panes such as the fields pane. You can also collapse the ribbon to the condensed view. Next, we are going to talk about the undo and redo. So this is the simplest option because since the time we start working on the computer, undo and redo are the one that we mostly use. So I think I really don't need to talk about this one, but if you would like to know more, please let me know. Here, you should also remember that many other shortcuts are available in Power BI Desktop. You can use the Shift plus question mark keyboard shortcut to view a complete list of keyboard shortcuts. So that's gonna help you a lot whenever you are gonna work on the Power BI reports. So once you're gonna get used to of it, it would be very easy for you to work on the Power BI Desktop application and you can wrap up your work within minutes. Now we are going to talk about design visually appealing reports. That means what are the changes that you can do to your Power BI reports to enhance the user interface. And that includes space, size, alignment, color and consistency. Let's discuss them one by one over here. The very first comes the space. That means you have to be always very much careful about the space of your canvas. You can increase or decrease that one as well if you would like to use the custom space for your Power BI report design canvas. Always use your space wisely. Second comes the size. So as I just mentioned, you can increase or decrease the size of your page. You can use either custom or 16 ratio 9 or the way you want. But always you should design your report in advance on a rough paper or either in PowerPoint or the way you feel. Because once you are going to start designing your report, you should have a definite picture into your mind what you are looking for. In 99% scenario, end user knows that what they are looking for, so they can give you the rough sketch of that one as well. And on the basis of that, you can start designing your own Power BI reports as per the requirements. Now comes to the alignment. Alignment is very important. You should make sure that your report looks appealing to the end users in terms of alignment. It should not overlapping each other or just crossing each other or something like that. And you can definitely understand by the image that you can see on your screen right now. Now comes to the color. Color should be consistent. It should not look like a rainbow into your report. So you have to be very much careful about it. And one another aspect of knowing this that you should be aware about if there are the people into your organization or the end users who are color blind. So those colors also should be appealing to them. Consistency can be in terms of your font size, your visualization, your color schemes, etc. So you have to be consistent in terms of your theme. Be aware that theme will be overridden when you explicitly configure a format option. Now, you should try to limit overriding the report theme to an exception basis because if you switch themes, overridden properties won't update. Now comes to the reformat report for mobile consumption. As I mentioned you previously, that report layout is different in terms of your mobile devices or in terms of your desktop. When we know that our end users can use the report on their mobile devices or in their laptop or desktop or maybe in some bigger screens. So it's a part of the requirement and as a part of the requirement, you should design your report accordingly. Now comes to the part where we design reports for accessibility and here you can see that. You should focus on the styling and there should be minimalistic design when you are designing any visualization. And here you can see this explicitly. On your left hand side, you can see the same graph which is on your right hand side, but the design is quite different. So you can follow this kind of approach. Design reports for accessibility part two. That means over here we can discuss about alternative text. So what does that mean? Basically, whenever somebody's clicking on any visualization. If you want there to appear some information that can be your conditional text or you can simply write the text over there. As you can see on your screen on this snapshot, enter a description that will be read by the screen reader on selecting the visuals. Whenever your end user is going to read that particular visualization and you want some information to appear over there, accept the tooltip, they can read it over there. 
third is the tab order so we have already discussed the tab order so i really don't think so i need to repeat it again now this is the conditional formatting which i already discussed in our last video but let's discuss it briefly over here that simply means there are many cases when we are working on our visualizations so we have to do the conditional based color formatting or we have to also apply the icons or bars or in some cases we just want to display the numbers so all those cases we have to use the conditional formatting now we are going to discuss about the report consumption experience report consumers should be able to fully use and interact with your power bi reports be sure that you educate them on how to how to means how high contrast color themes works like they can go to the menu and they can apply all there how they can use the tab key to navigate between report objects on the page how users can use many different keyboard shortcuts to shift focus into visual navigate between the data points select one or more data points or clear selections how they can use focus mode to zoom into a visual or how they can show the data table to view the underlying data of any visual in tabular format not only that you should also train your end users how they can use the personalized visuals that option is available into power bi so they can even change their visualization type according to their own requirements so after you have completed the ui requirements you are ready to prepare your report for publication before you publish your report you will need to test it in the testing phase make sure that you test your report prior to publication that means you should validate the data you should undergo a user acceptance testing to ensure that the report meets the requirement and report consumer expectations be sure to collect and review the feedback and implement the necessary changes preparation for publication before you publish your report please make sure that the state of the report aligns with the intended initial experience reset all the filters or if you would like to publish the report with some default values please do that and lastly select the first page of your report don't forget that many of the times people make that mistake that they are making any of the changes into the report they are on some another page or they have selected some values and they publish the report and that becomes the default report whenever some end user is going to consume the report so always make sure about that now comes to the providing the support so providing support can be by many ways one option is that you can design your report in a way that there is a button or the user can click they can send you email or they can navigate to some website where they can raise the ticket and they can get the help they are required otherwise you can create a power bi app over there you can provide the contact information so they can directly contact you over there and not only that even you can provide some of the documentation link where there would be standard operating procedure how to use the report how you can navigate to the report so that you don't need to train everyone again and again and the lastly manage change that means often it's better to publish a new report that includes many updates than release smaller incremental changes this approach make it easier for you to inform your audience of changes for example consider a situation using deployment pipelines to better manage the life cycle of organizational content and if you don't know about the deployment pipelines please watch another video on our channel where i have mentioned everything about the deployment pipelines and how you can take the advantage of them not only that there are certain external tools available for power bi for example alm toolkit or even you can use the tabular editor 3.0 for publishing your changes into the power bi so please pause your screen for a minute or two and have a look at these questions and help me to answer these in the comment section but since this is the last episode so i'm going to give you the answers over here so please feel free to check your answers or match your answers with these and i hope this is going to help you a lot thank you very much guys for watching this video and this series and i'm really thankful for your feedback if you have any questions please don't forget to let us know you can comment in the comment section and if you are new over here please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest power bi updates and videos